Hey, I can hear you now. Beautiful. And you sound great. How you doing? Hey, doing good. Uh, am I coming through? Am I clipping or anything? Or No, you sound good. Oh, cool. Hey, thanks, man. Oh, uh, yes. How you doing today? I'm, uh, I'm doing pretty okay. I bought new sandals. Always good. Was well overdue. Old ones were very old. Um, so yeah, with, with big successes like that, it's hard to say today could be anything but good. Um, you emailed me. Oh with yeah, I mean, you totally need in the, Is it really hot where you are right now? You live in like Tacoma or something, right? I'm in or, Seattle. Like, Seattle or... Today was pretty nice. I mean, it, it's summer, so it's supposed to be warm. It's been a bit unseasonably warm, but I think that's just what we're meant to get used to now. Yeah, unfortunately, I think that's the, <laughs> how it's going to be for a while. Yeah, so you emailed me with a disagreement. Uh, I don't remember what it was about. Hit me up. Oh, yeah, well, I was watching your Son v. Marin Day debate appearance. Do you remember that? That was the lady with the uh, PowerPoint, right? Yeah, she had, like, the five common arguments or something. Right, right, right. Yeah, it was that one. Yeah, people like that. Yeah, I, I remember. Yeah, like, you really seem to disagree with her on a lot. I was listening to your opening statement, and... You really seem bought into this whole self ID view of gender and sex and all that, and how just identifying as a woman or identifying as a man makes you trans. I, I guess I just had some disagreements with that. And I kind of want to hear your thought process through that. Yeah, certainly. Uh, hit me up. What do you disagree with? Well, I guess to kind of talk about the things we do agree with, I do believe that gender and sex are separate but they are related as you said in your opening agreement in your opening statement mm -hmm. and you know when people are born they're assigned to sex they're assigned to gender at birth right yeah can we both agree on that right we i guess we we extrapolate one based on the uh, observable sex of a, of a baby yeah yeah and usually it's like penis boy vagina girl and even like I mean, would you agree with that? Yeah, generally. Yeah. And then, like, even with intersex people, they have indeterminate genitalia, but they are still assigned a gender yeah, at and birth, right? They're usually raised as one. You know, in a lot of cases with intersex people who have indeterminate genitalia, the parents will make a kind of arbitrary decision, um, social and sometimes medical, as to, like, how to raise the kid. And um, sometimes that works out, and sometimes it doesn't. It's, it's kind of a um, complicated topic. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've seen, like, a documentary where, like, this guy, they thought, you know, he was get he just had, like, kind of a misformed vagina, and they raised him as a girl. But then, you know, it turns out it was more like a misformed penis and testicle, so then he, I guess, not really transitioned back into being a man. But once he started going through puberty, they kind of realized he was a man. Yeah, so, you know, playing with stakes. In the even future. sometimes they're mess. Yeah, even we try our best, right? Yeah. Well, I hope we do. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. And so once we're assigned that gender at birth, we can either stick with that gender, making somebody cisgender, or we can transition into a transgender role. Yes. Right? Okay, so why do you think these people would want to tra transition into another role? Well, I don't think the roles have clear um, and definite definitions to begin with. You know, we're kind of relying on a set of arbitrary and socially determined taxonomies to describe what it means to be a guy or a girl. Um, if you want to move out of that, I mean, that could be because you just don't think it aligns with your personality archetype. It could be because you think there's a dissonance between your gender identity, your preferred gender identity, and what your body has developed to be. Because people do associate, of course, femininity and womanhood with tits and pussy or whatever, and vice versa the other way around. Um, or you could do it just in a, in a completely arbitrary fashion, like a, the rejection of the social label. Um, which is also totally fine. You know, I don't think you need like a good reason to change your gender. I just, if you do it, you do it, right? Well, I don't know if it's like a, if you do it, you do it type of thing. Maybe like if you're more on the gender fluid side of things, but there would need to be something they would see in the other gender that they would want to transition to, right? Um, well, it's kind of like any other label, right? 
a person referring to themselves mm -hmm. as a gamer or a goth or a sports fan. I don't think there's that much stake in the label. Well, could you be a gamer if you don't play video games? Um, yeah, theoretically, right? If a person or like board games or like let's say any type of games, let's say you just read books. Yeah, if a person was like, really you into say you're the, a gamer? the culture of gaming, I guess, like they were really interested in its like aesthetics or history. Like there are those people who who like fastidiously uh, collect shoes despite not like really wearing any streetwear or or like kicks or whatever. Um, yeah, it's 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 pretty varied, you know. Or certainly, like if if we're looking for definitions like goth or whatever, I mean, we're getting so blurry that it's it's, it's difficult to draw any kind of definite lines. Uh, I I mean, right? Find me a person with a definite like concrete line where you are or aren't goth, depending on which side of it you are on. It's it's not really possible. But even though these outlines are blurry, doesn't mean that these outlines are not real, right? I think they're they're real in the sense that people have very real understandings of them, but not in the sense that there's some kind of absolute definition you could refer to. Like if I if the the idea of what a woman is in America is really inconsistent and will vary massively person to person, but there's still a kind of um general social archetype that I think you could refer to in a constructed sense. But I don't I don't know if you could ever say that's wrong. Like if like if you ask somebody like what does it mean to be a woman? They're like, well, I think being a woman means being strong. You wouldn't be like, nah, no, that's a man thing, idiot. Like you can't, even though we do typically associate yeah, strength. Yeah, you wouldn't think that, right? Like that'd be ridiculous. Yeah, but it's, that means it's right? non-falsifiable because even in, a, in an instance where you, you would imagine you would have like an exact contrary example, like, well, no, men are the ones who are considered strong. That's the typical role, but you still can't prove them wrong for saying it, right? So I don't think there is like a, hardline definition to refer to no i don't think i don't think there's a hardline definition either that's why we can see people like Snooky from the jersey shore and someone like an actress like sarah paulson and how they're two very different women but they are both in fact women right yeah i mean last time i heard yeah and then we can also see how changed. what was that oh i said last i heard i don't know if their minds have changed Oh, me neither. I, I, as far as I'm aware, they're both cisgender women. But we can also see a transgender woman is a lot like a woman, right? Oh, I don't know. I don't know what it means to be like a woman, to be honest. Okay, then let's talk about like transgender men. Like a transgender man looks a lot more like a man than, let's say, a cisgender woman, right? Yeah, if they dress, uh, if they dress the right way, and you know, take uh, hormones or sometimes, you know, get work done, then they can certainly, I mean, there are plenty of trans women who, who pass, right, as cis women, and, and likewise for trans men. So there are, you know, in, a, in an aesthetic sense, there are definitely people who cross that boundary uh, pretty effectively, I'd say. Yeah, so we see that there are people who want to transition to something, right? Yeah, lots of people. Yeah, so I think there is, like, a definition of being trans, and like a kind of like a definition, we all have this this general idea of what being a man and a woman is. Yeah, well, I so think I, we I have kind of a... understand your argument in the zombie debate, where you're kind of saying like these things are just words, and they don't mean anything and things like that. Well, they don't mean anything inherently. I know a lot of trans people who like these words mean a lot of things to them, right? Like, right. is their whole life and self perception, right? Yeah, they don't mean anything inherently. They mean a lot individually. Well, no word means anything inherently, right? Right. Well, that uh, that's the thing. I agree. This is why I hate the, well, like when people say, well, objectively a woman is this. Objectively, no word is anything. That's not how anything works. Language, we construct these definitions. But in this case, the, the definition is doubly constructed because not only do we decide like what the words mean, the term we're referring to is socially constructed too. So we're dealing with like two layers of ambiguity when it comes to whether or not anything could be said to be objective. Um, it, it, when it comes to gender identity. I'm not saying that gender identity doesn't mean anything to people. I'm just saying it doesn't mean anything empirically. It doesn't mean anything in a way one could cross-reference or check or refer to. At the most, you can get is intersubjective agreement, where you could say, okay, I don't know what it really means to be a woman, but I know that, for example, here in America, we have general traits we associate with it, like motherhood, being kind and patient, and that sort of thing. Um, but that wouldn't be an objective marker. And you wouldn't find a woman who isn't kind or patient and go, ah, well, by these definitions, then she's not a woman. Because it's all arbitrary. 
Yeah, like I said, there is no hard line of ways to be a woman. But like objectively, like a cisgender male could not objectively be a woman, right? Well, that the, I mean, those would be two contrary terms. But for... a transgender woman could be a woman because she adheres more to the social characteristics we all tend to share in our culture, right? Since we do live in a society and interact with people well, on she, a daily basis. Like she no man would be a island, woman, right? whether or not she did yeah, anything. She would be changed anything about her behavior uh, if you refer to the self-id model then all she would have to do is say she's a woman and that for that would that would be enough for me um obviously if so she like, wants to be would perceived that be enough? as a woman hmm? like why would that be enough if she has no desire to be a woman well, she... let's say it's a cisgender man who has no desire to be a transgender woman but he just identifies as a woman well, that would be the desire. If you identify as something, that's a conscious process that indicates a desire to identify as that thing. That would be the only marker I would need. I wouldn't really care if she wore, you know, feminine clothes or anything like that. It wouldn't really relate to my, you know, my categorization there. You could say that she's not feminine, right? Like, if there's a trans woman who says that she's a woman but does nothing to transition, you could fairly argue that she's not feminine and doesn't look or act womanly. Um, but it wouldn't really matter much to whether or not she is one of those things, because for anything that such a woman would be that deviates from our expectations of what a woman is, there are cis women who are like that too. But doesn't that feel a little transphobic that you're saying a cisgender man with no desire to transition into a woman would be just as valid as a transgender woman who put in the work to be, let's say not even traditionally like a super hyper conservative woman, let's say like more like a redneck woman. So she could still be masculine, sure. but she wants to project herself as a woman. Why would that be just as valid because as a cisgender man? Well, if, if they're who doesn't desire to transition. Well, if they say that they identify as a woman, they're not a cisgender man. You mean a totally not transition trans woman, somebody who uh is isn't doing any work to make themselves appear as or act as a woman but the validity of the identifier woman it's not a more than thing right like for instance uh being tall and strong are masculine characteristics they're associated with being a man but i'm not more of a man than a guy who's shorter than me like you could say i'm more masculine than them in that respect but the whole what you identify as thing, it's, it's modal. It's not really like a spectrum where one person can be literally more of a woman than another. They're both women. Maybe one's more feminine. Is it, wait, so like a cisgender man with no desire to transition, no dysphoria, like let's say Steven Crowder just says he's a woman as a joke. That's as valid to you as like like Janet Mock or like that's as valid to you as Laverne Cox or something like if you think a person make any sense if you think a person's being insincere uh like for instance like I, I think there are lots of ways that we respect people when it comes to self-id like their names if a person wants to change their name you know they don't need to prove anything to me I'll call them by the name they want but if I'm like if I'm in school and said like I'm in high school or whatever and some guy goes up to me and like hey <laughs> my new name is shit dicks so you have to call me shit dicks like I don't think that I'm having my belief on recognizing, respecting other people's names being challenged when I don't do that with them. You know, I, if, a, if a person's being transparently insincere, then like, OK, you can you can be rude to them on that basis. But if a person's being sincere and somebody's like, yeah, I'd like to go, I'd like to, you know, I identify as a woman, but I'm not going to transition in any way. Um, then, yeah, th they would be as much of a woman as any other woman. All women are equally a woman. They're not equally feminine, of course, or they're not equally passable. Yeah, they're not. Or... Obviously, they're not equally feminine. I mean, they're a cisgender woman who are not feminine that we still consider women, yeah. right? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Or like butch lesbians who sometimes get accused of being trans women and uh, kicked out of bathrooms. Yeah. Yeah, so they're still the same gender, right? Even though they branch out in all these ways. Yeah. So, like, someone could transition to being a woman, like a butch woman, right? Like I said earlier. Well, yeah, certainly. I, I mean, if they, they would probably yeah, so be considered. Yeah, so why are they just butch, as valid right? as someone like Steven Crowder?
Well, I, I don't think they're just as valid. Steven Crowder does this bit. In well, he said all right? women are women. He said to be a woman is just to identify as a woman, right? Yeah, but as I said, if a person's being transparently insincere with that or any element of their identity, I don't feel I have to be, you know, considerate towards it. But if they're being sincere, then sure, yeah. Uh, okay, I guess I'm just totally lost on this whole... Because I said a cisgender man with no desire to transition. Do they... Do the cisgender... So you think you could be sincere about being a woman with no desire to be a woman? Well, wait, if... Is, so and is not the, being a woman? Is the like, cisgender... Is the cisgender man saying they identify as a woman? Yeah, they're saying they, they I'm a woman. And they're not Let's a cisgender. Say you're at a bar and a cisgender man. He's like, I'm a woman. Then they're not a cisgender man. Then they'd be a trans woman. Yeah, but like, what if it was like a redneck bar in like Alabama or something? And like, I mean, whatever. He's like, oh, look at me. I'm a, I'm a woman. Okay. Don't I sound as crazy as like a radical lefty? Well, like they, you would believe him if they said like. I identify as a woman, or like, I mean, so are they like, they're That's like, not what I'm saying, I said, he said I am a woman. Just, so, so they're not like coming out to me, they're just saying I am a woman? No, they're just saying it. Oh, they're just well, saying I'm a woman. Well, I don't know their story, what if they're a trans woman who just hasn't had the ability to socially transition, they could be in the closet for all Well, I if know. it's like I said, where I said they're a cisgender man with no desire to transition. So, what, so they, so they're just saying I'm a woman. And they yeah, just saying I'm a woman. That would mean they identify as a woman because they just said I'm a woman. Or are so you suggesting they're Travolta lying? So when John was in Hairspray and he was acting like a woman and being a woman, you believed he was actually a woman? I'm afraid I, I didn't see Hairspray. Well, let's say somebody in drag like RuPaul, he dresses up like a woman. He's like, oh, hey, girls. But so, RuPaul doesn't claim to be a woman. RuPaul is doing a performance where femininity is the, um, is the subject of the performance. RuPaul doesn't claim to be a woman. Okay, how about when Lauren Southern got her gender changed to male on her license? Oh, that'd be and a, she said, I'm literally a man. Well, that'd be like a legal designation. Um, you know, what was that? Well, that'd be a legal designation. Uh, there are people whose, whose legal gender doesn't overlap with their actual... So when a trans woman gender. transitions legally, that's not like really transitioning? Well, what I consider to be what I consider to be whether or not you've crossed the threshold and become a woman or whatever is if you simply say you identify as one or indicate that that is what your your gender is. You're expressing what you think of yourself to be. Um, the legal identifier is a uh, it's the consideration of the state, you know. And if Lauren Southern were to go up to me and go like, "Huh, I'm a man now," actually, I probably wouldn't take it seriously because I don't trust her. She lies all the time on many issues. Um, and I think she's just being insincere. But you know, if Lauren Wait, Southern... Wait, so if a trans person came up to you and you didn't believe them, you, that's okay for you to misgender them? Uh, if I felt a person was being insincere, then yeah, I don't think there's anything transphobic oh, okay. about that's marking people for insincerity. Like I said, if a person went up to me and was like, my name's shitfuck, actually. Like, I, I, I don't think that it would be um, rude of me to go, okay, well, I'm not going to call you that. Interesting. Is it? I mean, this doesn't happen in the real world. What you're describing, what we're talking about is... Well, I mean, I already brought up Stephen Crowder identifying as a woman. I already brought up Lauren Southern but the identifying thing is, as a man legally. You might like, notice how you, you doesn't happen in the real world? that neither of those instances caused any confusion or trepidation in the trans community. There was no actual difficulty in navigating bad faith actors on the far right trying to make fun of trans people by flippantly identifying as them. In the real world, trans people are you know, going through a pretty rough time and they consider their identity pretty important in most cases. And they usually act with a great deal of sincerity and care and consideration when they talk about stuff like this. If you want to like test this system by going, well, what if people acting in bad faith, then congratulations, every social construct is up on the table. I'll tell you, I feel the same way about race. I feel the same way about nationality and ethnicity. What does it mean, for instance, to be Italian or Irish, you know? Nobody has a hundred percent ethnic consistency going back far enough. If a person says they're Irish when in reality they're only 50 percent, 40, 33 percent, the God's honest truth is that I just don't care. We're talking about identifiers that are, you know, maybe they're important to them and other people, but what matters most to me, and I think most people, is that they just get some basic respect and get taken seriously as long as they're not hurting people. Wait, so you don't think Irish people and Italian people, like those, do you believe those terms, like, 
mean something? They mean something in the sense that we have a sort of subjective understanding of what they mean. What does it mean when a person says yeah, they're Irish? Yeah, they mean something. That's, that's what I said. Yeah, that's, well, everything means something in the sense that we ascribe meaning to it. I don't think there's an yeah, objective that's, meaning. Yeah, that's language, Bosch. Like, where yeah, I, every word has meaning. Well, so, like, of course. So what, what does Irish it mean? person who's what? never been to Antarctica and has lived in Ireland their whole life and never been to Antarctica say they've been to Antarctica because Whether or not, traveling is just like a concept. So no, that's not a mode of identifier. Traveling and having been something or somewhere, that's a actual empirical measurement, which isn't the case with say being a woman. Uh, so I wouldn't say that. But what does it mean to you when a person says that they're Christian? I mean, I usually, that means they're part of the Christian church. They believe in a God, Jesus, probably like the Holy Spirit or something. Oh, well, hold on. Whoa, they probably whoa. believe like Christ was crucified on the cross. Well, Col something like hold that. on. I know of Christian uh, uh, denominations that don't believe in separate versions of everything that you just mentioned. The Holy Trinity? Lots of Christians don't believe in that. And there are people who believe that the... Um... Can you name like two fractions of the Christian, you know, system that don't believe in... God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit? Uh, yeah, wait, the, like a lot of Protestant denominations and a lot of American-oriented like uh, cutoffs, like Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, American scientists. Yeah, I'm not like an Jehovah's expert. Jehovah's Witness don't believe in the... I, I think, I think oh, oh, at least one of the three I just mentioned, I said like the American branch-offs. Uh, I'm not an expert on religion, but like it is an objective fact. Well, are you telling me like who... these... No, 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 wait, I, wait. I, like that just seems kind of weird to me. No, I'm, I'm telling you... They can you be that... Christian and not believe in Christ. So you, or God or the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you that your definition of Christian is not adhered to by people who go to church weekly. So would you go like up to them and go like, ah, well, objectively, you're not a Christian. Also, believing in Christ isn't just a Christian thing. The Muslims believe that he was a, um, a, a, a prophet of Allah, right? Um, I mean, the Jews believe in the Old yeah. Testament, and that's the predicated, right? So, well, no, wait, don't the Muslims not believe that Christ is a prophet? No, don't, that's why they believe in Muhammad, right? Don't they think he was a prophet, but not the prophet? Like Muhammad was the big one. Uh, no, I'm not a Muslim, dude. I'm like culturally, let's say Catholic at most. <laughs> culturally Catholic. That's interesting. Can you tell me what that means? Oh, yeah. It means like my family was all Catholic. I was raised around Catholics. Okay. And, you know, I have a little understanding. Like I know the dinner prayer. Okay. So I know like... If a person said they were culturally Catholic, but they didn't know the dinner prayer, would you call them on that? Would you say that it's um, a denigration of the term culturally Catholic? Well, no, I would probably just say, like, well, were you raised in, like, a Catholic environment? Because that's why I mean by culturally Catholic. Define Catholic environment. Being raised in the Philippines, but you maybe their parents were Catholic. Well, you can't appeal to what I know here. You have to tell me, what does it mean to be raised in a Catholic environment? You know, like you do the dinner prayer, you celebrate Easter. Celebrate Easter. Um, you okay. talk about the saints, you do. What is that? Oh, so what if you grow up in a Catholic environment, like say in Mexico, uh, but your parents are agnostic and don't explicitly do any of those things, but the whole world around you is Catholic. I mean, you walk Yeah, by then you would also be in a Catholic environment because you're surrounded by Catholics and their traditions, right? Oh, so you would say that around they, all the saint days and everything. And like in Mexico, they have like all the saint days and like. Church. Yeah, like you would still be culturally Catholic. Well, you. So anyone from Mexico would be culturally Catholic to you. Well, if they grew up in a Catholic part, if they grew up in like one of the more indigenous like parts like Oaxaca, or, well, I guess they do have Catholics over there. How many but, you years? Know, there are like Jewish pockets of Mexicans and things like that. Oh, sure, but they're still in a broader environment. How many years would they have had to have been in those Catholic pockets of Mexico in order for you to not call them a liar when they say they're culturally Catholic? If they left at 12, would that be okay? Or if they left at like 10? Well, 10's still old enough. I think you Wait, can, can you repeat the question? I, I feel like I've got kind of spun around on it. Oh, of course. If a person leaves Mexico uh, mm -hmm. when they're young, and then moves uh -huh. over to a non-Catholic area. What, how long must they have been in Mexico uh, in order for them to be authentically culturally Catholic? I don't know. 12 sounds like a pretty good call. I mean, I don't have like a hard line answer or anything like that. You don't? 
But what if they yeah, leave like it? There's no hardline answer to what it's like to be a woman. But we do see there are things that transgender women and transgender men want to go to to the other side, right? A lot of them also do, when, certainly. It wouldn't mean to anything, right? What do you mean? Well, I'm sorry? Like, we do see that there is something that we recognize in reality. Yeah, we have an intersubjective understanding of what it means to be a man to woman. Though it varies time to time, culture to culture, neighborhood to neighborhood, even mm -hmm. family to family, person to person. But yeah, we yeah, that's why we have like the broad. new hair woman in Oaxaca, Mexico, who, well, even though they're born cisgender men, they transition to transgender woman, right? Because they see something they want to identify and project onto and be perceived into their life, right? I don't know. I'm not an expert on that specific ethnic uh, group. or. Well, I mean, it's just kind of like a trans... It's, you know, it's kind of like the transgender... It's like the Mexican version of being transgender, so we see that this appears in other cultures, right? Well, uh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think you mentioned, like, the Philippines, from... they used to have, like, a third gender or something. A deviation we see from what we consider to be and, like, cisgender behavior. So, oh, sorry, I'm cutting you off. Go ahead. No, 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 just deviations from what we would consider to be uh, cisgender identities have existed all over the world at times, though in different ways. But what I, I guess what, what I'm curious about fundamentally, because the whole point of talking about the culturally Catholic thing is that when people tell us about what they are or what they feel they are or how they feel, um, we don't really call them on it because it would be insane to in most cases. If a person described themselves to me and I was like, okay, well, I'm going to need qualifiers for all of your claims on this, that, the other, and, and not just qualifiers, but proof as well. Like I need proof you were in Mexico for this length of time. I need proof that you have six items of black clothing or you can't call yourself a goth. We don't normally do that. We normally just go, oh, well, okay. And if you wanted to go later after understanding Well, that yeah, we don't normally do that, but if someone just says I'm a goth and they don't have any black stuff and they don't listen to The Cure, like, what do you... Well, you can't prove you know, them we, objectively I think it would wrong. be fair at that point to be like, wait, what makes you a goth? And like, maybe they listen to Bauhaus on the side. Sure, well, hey, how about that? If a person, like, if a person tells you, I'm a woman, and you're having a conversation mm -hmm. about gender identity, and they don't seem to have done any transitioning, you can say, really? Well, what does that mean to you? And maybe you'll get an interesting answer. Because if they are being sincere, yeah, they would, will have an answer. I would say answer. that, because I would be kind of confused. Oh. And if they told me something like, I do have a desire, then I would consider them a woman. What if it's about their but internal world? But if they said, I'm a cisgender man that has no desire to transition, I, then that statement is invalid, right? Well, They're just saying random words. Well, yes. If they said, I'm a cisgender man and I'm a woman, then that would just be a linguistic contradiction that would render what they're saying moot. Or at least yeah, I so would Yeah, so there is a difference between men and women, right? I didn't say there wasn't a difference between men and women. Well, because Sanvi brought up in the argument that you kind of bring up this idea of the social characteristics, which I, you know, I agree with. There are social characteristics for a woman, social characteristics for a man. I believe in them because that's why I believe people transition to go from a different gender, right? Many people do. But if a and person And you kind was... of brought up this whole idea that it's all, like, it's not even real, it's not, it's all fake, we can be whatever we want. Well, you... And I, I don't mean, think it's kind of like that. Listen I to think whom, it's kind of like a more personal thing. Listen to whom you're speaking, right? I mean, do I act as though I don't believe there's literally any such thing as a man or a woman in a social sense? I dress in men's clothing. I talk and mm -hmm. articulate and gesture the way men tend to. I mean, clearly I'm adhering to some standardization here, you know, even though there's variance within it. I'm not saying that there's no such thing as man or woman in a social sense sense i'm just saying that exceptions to our general understanding of these subjects exist even within cisgender people butch lesbians in my experience look and act nothing mm -hmm. like women in fact if when they're wearing their flannel they are indistinguishable from scrawny men um I, it's, yeah i've it's, actually it's, misgendered butch lesbians a couple of times on my local gay bar oh, i'm sure so, they you know, consider I, it a they do <laughs> yeah they took it in stride they're like, you know, I thought you were a twink, don't even worry. <laughs> so I think to a lot of people, you know, even if a person was just to say to me, you know, oh, I, I am a woman or I identify as a woman, and they, there wasn't anything external that indicated this, I would just assume that at least at the moment, whatever they've got going on in a, in a gender sense is an internal process. Huh. Interesting. The way they think about themselves. Like that, that way you make it kind of sound like it's like if a fight if like a baby said they were like a helicopter or something like you can't feel it'd be just as valid right because like these words don't 
No, because a helicopter... Mean anything. That's kind of what I took away from your argument. A helicopter isn't a mode of social identification, and I don't think a baby knows what a helicopter is, so I don't think that could happen or be believed if it were said to be true. Okay, uh, let me try to think of a better way to explain that. Do you that, agree that a person's gender identity can be a largely, not entirely, but largely internal experience? Like, the way you think as a guy, well, you, I mean, it's not yeah, just Yeah, it's a pretty like, internal uh, experience, but we have it. Oh, well, sorry, I'm cutting you off. Go ahead. Oh, it's, I mean, not just in like a brain chemistry way, but if you're thinking and you, you're, you're a guy and I'm, I'm a guy, right? And if I'm thinking about how yeah, I present myself, dress, men, right? right, right. And, and if you're thinking about how you present yourself, engage with the world, how you want to be treated, these things are affected often by one's gender identity. That's an internal process, you know? Um, in my mind, often I feel that transitioning socially is just a way of getting others to ascribe to you the label that you internally ascribe to yourself. In your mind, you think of yourself as something. You have an idea of what it means to be you. And that's a broad idea because what it means to be a person, that's like a, it's a, it's a really um, abstract concept. But you want people to be respectful of that, you know? Um, and we have rough terms for it. Right now we have like man, woman, non-binary. These are very rough terms. We have other identifiers. Maybe you want to be treated differently by saying you're uh, an introvert or an extrovert, you know. But transitioning socially to me is just a way for people to say, all right, world, I'm ready for you to try to treat me the way that I treat myself. And that's a rough process for a lot of people and it can involve a lot of work. But, you know, the reason why I'm, I'm open and permissive with these ideas is, is because, uh, you know, I, I, I just, I don't think there's any value to stopping and checking them, right? I don't, I don't know if we do that for other identifiers. Why do it here? Oh, no, I totally agree. Like, transitioning socially is a pretty scary thing to do because a lot of trans people think, like, do I pass? Am I going to be harassed? Am I going to be, you know, attacked in the street, right? And, like, but they do have a desire inside themselves to be perceived by the outside world and their community as the opposite gender they were assigned to birth. So we do see that these things have a meaning more than just saying, I am a man, I am a woman. Right, well, but the meaning is going to shift person to person, system to system. Um, we're not referring to an objective metric. Well, yeah, everything whether... shifts from person to person, right? Like, we all don't have the same perception, we all don't have the same... We're not a hive mind. Right, we're so if a person's perception of woman possibly mm -hmm. includes somebody who looks like me. I don't think a lot of people would agree with that, but I don't think they're objectively wrong. They can't be proven to be wrong because there is no objective marker to compare it to. You could say so it looks like you and thing. like, let's say exact clone of you. Sure. Exactly like me. So you're saying a cisgender man is the same as a transgender woman? No, because if they identify like they're as on a the woman, same spectrum? they'd be a trans woman if they identified as one. No, but you said someone like you, like a cisgender man who doesn't identify as a trans woman. Well, if I didn't identify as a woman... That's as equal to a transgender. Sorry, go ahead. Well, if I didn't identify as a woman, then I would just continue to be a man. And Most people don't have an issue referring to me as a man. But if I looked exactly as I do, yeah. and I said, I am a woman, it's entirely possible that I, or this the clone of me who said this, whatever, has uh, an understanding of what it means to be a woman, which can include a person who looks like me and acts like me. Yeah, so you think a cisgender man who doesn't act with a social role at all, like at all, and doesn't go on HRT, doesn't get surgery, doesn't interact with a social role, like why are they just as valid as someone like Leela Alcorn who killed herself because like... Valid as what? Like, why would that person just be as valid as Layla? Valid in... Well, we're all valid as humans. What do you mean? You're saying a, a cisgender man is as valid as, like, Layla Alcorn. Like, why is that... Wait, valid as... I feel like that's transphobic to as me. As people? We're all people. I don't know what you mean by valid. We're all people. I, I think that I'm as valid... Yeah, you're saying a... As any You're saying a man woman. who looks like you and just randomly says, like, I'm a woman is just as valid. In, like, in, I, th I feel like that's a pretty In bad being argument. a woman, if a person identifies uh -huh. as a woman, then that to me is the end of the argument. If you want to argue about any... Uh, well, because the whole argument that I laid forward about self-identification, the internal 
world of gender, the fact that it's literally not possible to empirically disprove what I'm saying, the social utility, the whole conversation has been me explaining why. Well, let's say this Vosh 2.0 who just is like you, but just says she's a woman. Let's say she's a so woman. Then, so this would be a trans woman. This would be a trans woman who looks let's like say it's me. A, it, let's say it's a cis, uh, trans woman who wants to use he, him pronouns and looks like you. Okay. And was assigned male at birth. Mm -hmm. You would say that's a just as valid as someone like Abigail Thorne, who has transitioned socially, characteristically, has had. I think she's had some female feminization surgery, right? Or is that just contra points? I'm getting them confused. I I I, I don't know. Um, she's like, she's, she's British. That's valid. the end of it for me. Wait, you don't think she's trans? No, I think she's British. Okay, so you don't want to answer the question. Okay, no, I, I, get it. Like, I, I do want to answer, and I have answered. I was making a joke about well, you see, yeah, British you, people. Your answer was she, she would be as valid if somebody who as looked... Vosh 2, which is just, by all accounts, a Mav, he, him pronouns. If a person uh, just says... says that they're a, a woman, woman. they're by identifying right. as a woman. That's what, if, if you say you're a woman, that is identifying as a woman. Like, that's the definition of identifying as something. Then they are as much of a woman. Yeah, we can all identify model. as something, but just because we identify as something doesn't mean it's true, right? Well, that's because most things that we might identify as aren't identifiers the way that woman is. A helicopter is not an identifier. It's a type of military equipment, or I guess there are civilian helicopters. Um, Whereas woman is an identifier. It's one of those things that you really can just say, I am X, and that can be an argument. Um, I'm an introvert. Find me someone who can disprove that. I am, you know, I'm, uh, I was about to say I'm a Virgo. I, I think you can disprove that. Not that it fucking matters. Um, no, if you say I'm a woman, you identify as a woman, whatever, then that's the end of it to me. Now, if you want to say, is a person more well, valid in other identifiers? Really quick, well, you, you, can, you can ask whatever you want, but the, the self-ID model is remarkably simple, so my, my answer is not going to vary much. Well, I guess it is simple, because it's, like, two, one plus one equals four is simple. But can you objectively that... prove makes sense, what, right? Can you objectively so, like, prove... You, wait, 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 wait. If can someone you... was a party wait, animal, no, wait, 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 party hold, every hold single on. night... Hold on, hold on. I don't think you can... Question, no, I, I know you are, someone but I'm... a party every single night and hung out with new people every single day and then get tired of it. And then they came to you and like, yeah, I'm actually an introvert. You would believe them? So if there's one thing I really dislike with conversations like this, it's when you don't learn lessons from previous answers. As we both agreed, you and I both, there's no objective answer uh -huh. to whether or not somebody is or is not a woman. There's no way, there's no objective reference. Yeah, there is isn't an objective answer, so but there is an answer, So your comparison, well, there are many answers, not an answer, singular, there are many. So your comparison yeah, there's some to wrong there's some one right plus... Answers. Okay, can you prove then how somebody's definition of woman is wrong? How would you do so? Yeah, like if a cisgender man with no desire to transition and wanted to use he, him pronouns said, I am a man, that wouldn't be true, right? Uh, prove it. I said no desire to transition. Approve. No desire. Okay. They just randomly say they're a you, woman. You seem to think that identity and transitioning are the same. I don't know why you think that. You why do people transition prove. if not to ad, like prove their identity and self-actualize and self-realize? People get uh, gender um, affirming surgery without being trans all the time. People get it for all sorts of reasons. People get mastectomy or breast implants. People get uh, uh, hair regrowth or that thing they do where they put the hair stalks back in that looks really uncomfortable for a couple of weeks afterwards. Yeah, hair really plugs, right. right. And when do this, women do this, men can have breast reduction with that gynecomastia surgery. Yeah, are they doing these things randomly or are they doing these things for an end outcome? They're doing these things because they want to, but it's not always because they're trying to medically transition their bodies. There are lots of cosmetic surgeries we do that may or may not potentially align with gendered interests that always don't. Right, I mean, is every? Yeah, I don't believe you need like surgery or all this stuff. Like, oh, then, like, then why do you keep equating Emilio identity and, and and transitioning there? Well, can I just point to someone like Emilio 
Robles Avia, who was a, colon a colonel in the Mexican Revolutionary Army. Uh, Bill Adobe sure. as a man from like 1810. 1890 to like 1980. You're referring to like the uh, trans man just... with the revolver who threatened to shoot people who would misgender him. Yeah, like he didn't have any surgeries. He didn't have anything. He just socially transitioned, right? Uh, yes. Okay. So because, if like, a person, so wait, transition surgery didn't start to like the 1980s. So, so let's. Us... So we're cutting off like... uh, medical intervention uh -huh. entirely. Now we're just talking about social transition. Yeah, like people. I think just socially transitioning is enough, but you have to like at least socially. Like unless you're in the closet because you're in a really bad area, oh. like Layla was. Well, what about that? Right. What if a person's in the closet? They haven't transitioned socially, but for years they've had a very strong internal belief that they are a different gender than that which they've been assigned. Yeah, I would believe them because they have that desire. How? Well, but well, a how cisgender could you know? man who does not have that desire. Wait, so again, you can't be a cisgender mm -hmm. man who identifies as a woman. You would just be a trans woman. Uh, uh, this is like Well, John Travolta is a cisgender man who identified as one in Hairspray, right? No, that's called acting. Tyler Perry is a cisgender man who identifies as one in Medea, right? So this is called acting. This is a different thing from identifying as one. It is acting. Social constructs and gender and thing are all kind of like a gender performance, like Judith Butler said, right? Uh, yeah, but Judith Butler would conk you over the head for citing her here, because when she talked about gender as a performance, she didn't mean literal, actual acting as a job that you go into and act And do in you think Judith camera. Butler would believe that a cisgender man with no desire to transition could identify as a woman and be correct in being a transgender Judith woman? Judith Butler? Yes, absolutely. Are you kidding me? 100%. Ju wait, Ju Judith, Judith huh. Butler's uh, theory of gender performativity leaves open. Does a, does a person, does a woman stop being a woman when she lays to sleep and does not act or perform in any fashion? No, 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 of course not. No, Judith Butler is an ally to trans people of all um, stripes and colors. I don't think there's Yeah, I'm an ally to trans people too. That's why I believe there is a difference between someone with no tr desire and someone with a desire. There is a difference. You just you seem it. to believe you, you seem to believe someone like Steven Crowder could say, I'm a woman. We've and already we answered this. Are you, are you forgetting earlier portions of this conversation? We've addressed this exact question. See, this is this is yeah, what I mean. Yeah, you said you wait, would wait, agree wait, with wait, 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 please. This is what I mean because we're running in circles now. You acknowledge there's no objective way to prove or disprove the metrics by which one is a woman, but then you talk about helicopters mm -hmm. and one plus one equals four. You cite Judith Butler and repeatedly cite existing trans women as though there's some kind of looming specter of cancellation that'll get me to change my answer or a clip you're trying to bait out. Well, the no, I'm just trying to bring up I've real examples because you're kind of vague in all your the, answers. Yes, it's interesting so that you're, real people who you're really matter, you know, who with, are really fighting for their lives right now. With, it's interesting, you're concerned with real examples when the subject that you're interested in is meaningless and affects nobody. The idea of a person who claims so since they're it's trans, meaningless, we shouldn't talk about like. Well, if it's, it's well, so do you do you, you then do you with, then see the uh -huh. argument that you are concerned with a meaningless topic right now, and we are arguing entirely over nonsense? Well, I'm a conservative real topic. You don't want to engage with it, so I'm giving you a hypothetical. Wait, what? 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 What don't I want to engage with? You seem to think being a being a woman or a man is just saying I'm a woman or I'm a man. That is the self ID model. You don't seem to believe model. in all the characteristics and everything. Yeah, I think that there's a difference between trans women who want to socially or medically transition and trans women who don't. But the difference is whether or not they want to do those mm -hmm. kinds of transitioning, not whether or not they're a woman. That's why it's called the self ID model. You just need to self ID. That's it. This is, by the way, I, I interact with a lot of trans people. This is not an experience that I've ever had. Like, interacting with somebody who insisted that they you never met a trans also, woman uh, or a trans man that said, I have a desire to be a, this opposite gender. I'm, they, they're like, I'm doing this randomly. Like, what do you mean? I'm not entirely sure what you think I said. What I said is I've never encountered this person you're referring to. Yeah, you to. said that you met a lot of trans people that don't have this idea that i have right no, I, oh, I'm no, no, no. I'm, I'm yeah I, i've never met a person who was like what mm -hmm. you're talking about somebody who says hey i'm a i i am a, a assigned male at birth and i go by he him pronouns but i'm a woman but also i'm not going to do any kind of social and medical transition if such a person were to exist i would still respect them but they're also at least not within my line of sight somebody that exists no, uh, but why would you respect them because it's the self ID model. They self ID'd. That's it. So it's, then, like, when done. conservatives are passing all these anti trans legislation and they're saying being transgender isn't real, they can point to your self ID model and say, 
well, look, even in their model, like, I could be a woman. Uh, the self-ID right. model has been uh, rallied around as a celebrated system for accepting trans identity because it's good for them, not because it's bad for them. Tr uh, conservatives would not stop being transphobic if we were like, oh, no, 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 as long as you socially transition. That's not how that works. They, they, they wouldn't give up and go, oh, well, we were going to exterminate your, your, your whole group. But, you know, now that you've only considered people trans who have engaged in some level of social transition, well, then we're going to hold off. This isn't a real, this isn't a real problem. In truth, none of this is a real problem. There's no harm at all in... And trans legislation isn't a real problem? What you... No, what you're to, talking about to isn't a real battle problem. these legislations, we need to prove that trans people are valid and real. Uh, and that there is a real so, person that we are defending, no, a real protected class What you're class talking that we are about defending, right? isn't a real problem. What you're describing is not a real problem. Uh, as I just said, no, you're not going to end the culture war against trans people by saying that trans people I mean, are I'm not trying to trans. end the culture war. I'm trying to, you know, validate trans people's existence. So, and can you explain like Florida, to me how you've made... People in Florida who, their... I think mean, they just pass a bill that you can't, your doctor can deny you gender affirming care. Under your prescription, just to be a woman, they won't even need that care. They can just say, well, I'm a woman. So I'll... What? Wait, 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 wait. You, wait, hold on. I don't think you've thought uh -huh. through your positions very well because you already argued that a person doesn't need any kind of medical transition to be considered valid in their transition. Yeah, they need a social transition. So what you're arguing right? now is that under your model, people would mm -hmm. collectively agree that they would need breast implants or bottom surgery in order to be considered... A trans woman and that would be the metric by which they would get gender affirming care Wait, i'm kind of lost system. like i feel like no trans you, you are lost that's the problem get surgery. You're, no your arguments are no yeah i feel like you're kind of misrepresent you're kind of making me like no a no, no. Trans you, you just medical you person. just made the i'm argument. just saying that what if someone, it's important to someone to affirm their gender you just something like female feminization surgery or phalloplasty you, you're aware of you're the saying, fact well you don't need that Wait, hold just on. being a man is being if a, a person man. wants Mm -hmm. medical treatment to help them align mm -hmm. with their gender identity and they go to the clinic and they say they want that that is them doing that i'm not entirely sure what's missing under the self-id model if they yeah, go so there why, why is that as valid as if, if a person who looks why like is a me cisgender man with no desire it's not a cisgender as as it's not who... a cisgender male no, no no you don't understand the terms that you're using if a person goes to a healthcare clinic and who looks mm -hmm. like me and says i'm a woman mm -hmm. i would like bottom surgery you realize that is both an element of social transition and an expression of interest in medical transition, right? So at that point, they already would have met the criteria that you think my people don't meet. Are we talking about a cisgender man who went in? For We're not talking about talking anything. About... The, the thing you're talking about isn't real and doesn't exist. You're talking about a, a, a made up people group of people tend to be who would... trans. No, don't. this isn't a real. This isn't real. It's not real. You, this group, you already admitted this is nonsense. This doesn't happen. This well, group of said, people doesn't you, exist. You're obsessing over them because you're trying to find a wedge argument against a system that works for everybody and hurts nobody. Well, is this strange? That doesn't it's, work who's for hurt? everybody. Explain right? to me who's hurt materially. Well, I guess nobody's hurt materially. Well, then right? that's it. As far as I'm concerned, we've well done like it. If I came in and said, oh, I think black people deserve equal rights because I don't even think black people are human. What? And I don't think any of us are human. What are, what are we on? So we I think we're now? all like lower than dirt. Is that materially? I'm still supporting black people, what are, right? What are you? What are you talking about? Well, you're saying if there's no material difference, you can have all these insane thoughts, right? No. What are you talking? No, I ask again. What are you talking about? You said it doesn't affect anybody materially, right? Like a self ID with gender for gender does not materially harm anyone. Can you please suggest to me who it harms? Well, I think it harms the trans movement because then, then why do Republican lawmakers trans... can look at these trans at this self ID and be like, see, they think a cisgender man with no desire There's... is just as equal as a woman. So what do you mean right? just as equal? Men and women that are equal. That is a material equal. harm, right? Wait, 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 like, wait, they wait, are wait, passing wait. these bills what do you and mean? they are hurting the community. What do you mean? And they are against these drag shit. What like, do you mean? There is a material harm a to not what words mean. What do you mean a cisgender man is equal to a woman? They, what, they are. What do, what do you In mean? In my example, it was a cisgender man with no desire to transition. Said they were a woman. 
And okay. you said so you would believe that. I'm gonna so I'm gonna do this one more time, okay? And it's gonna be the you last know. time you get to say that because it makes me feel like you're not taking the well, you're not taking the argument seriously. I can tell you're smiling when you talk. I can hear the way your corners of your lips are turned. But we'll try this one more time because I know you like the attention, right? There's no such thing uh, okay. as a cis man who identifies a woman. You are categorically describing a trans woman. If you say cis so man again, so when John Travolta identifies a woman in Hairspray, that he was a woman. There it is. When... All right, that's it. Yeah, it's it's the that's 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 one of the metrics where you can tell when a person is um is uh is deliberately lying or acting in bad faith. It was like fifty times with the same arguments over and over. That's a shame. He came in uh, he came in nice, but the nice at the beginning, I think, was just to drag this out longer. Which I don't know if it did. I think it would have lasted about this long no matter what. Thanks, Vosh. Now I have brain cancer. Oh, oh, sure, sure. Brain cancer conversation to be sure. But hey, wasn't that a great reaffirmation of the fact that there are no arguments against the self-ID model? Wasn't that great? Much like the bitch that he was uh, initially bringing up in the beginning, the PowerPoint bitch, uh, who hates trans people but hides it beneath vacuous arguments. Um... Uh, there are no actual arguments against it, you know? It's, uh, it's uh, irrefutable. Mathematically proven. That's what the uh, Oppenheimer movie is about. He discovered self-ID. That's, that's it, was, it was very powerful. Um, yeah, th this is like a pattern that I always run into, where they have the initial questions and arguments, but the, the longer it goes on, the more it feels like they're trying to bait a clip because they keep returning back to the most sensationalized language possible. Like, you think a cis man who says they're a woman would be equal valid to this one trans woman who was murdered? Like, oh, you really, is, are we really testing the ideas here or are you just trying to, like, bait a clip? Like, also, mentioning Abigail Thorne, who is a fucking gender abolitionist, um, who, who argued that dysphoria isn't even categorically real. Um, I, don't, I don't know what kind of infighting that was meant to uh, provoke, but that person probably doesn't know much about people on the left, because uh, they're probably a fascist, or at the very least... Uh... Oh, right, but the longer and longer the conversation goes on, you can, um, you can tell they're smiling when they're talking, and their voice starts to drawl more. As in they say longer, they take longer to say the same thing. It's because they, um, um, they, they've lost the initial bite because you haven't taken it. And they're now just trying to like cycle back. Like, like when, like when I was like, Hey, can you explain what harm the gender ID model is? And he was like, Oh, I can't find one. But what if I said all people, even black people are bad? It's like, wait, what the fuck are you talking about? How did you make that kind of observation? The uh, smiling thing you can hear when a person talks while they're smiling. Like, you, you can hear if you know how to look for it. That's just an experience thing. Basically, everyone does it. You can hear it when I do it. Uh, when I talk while I'm smiling, you can tell. it's I can't really fake a smile that well, but it's like, um... Ah, you know, like, hey, can you hear me talking? There's like, I, I, there's just, it, it's a way it sounds different. I'm not like an audio expert, so I don't know how it sounds different, but you, you can tell. Um, and also the drawl, the D-R-A-W-L, when, when they start like, ah, you know... Um, it's because it's, 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 it's biting for time primarily. Oh, so anyway, yeah, consider this a, um, uh, a rounding endorsement of the effectiveness of the self-ID model. Look at what an extreme example he had to go to to try to find, like, a hole in the whole system, you know? What if you had a trans woman who didn't do any kind of social or medical transition and didn't want to? Yeah, they're a woman. Really? So they're just like, let me name all these trans celebrities, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, what if a, yeah, what if a cis guy was a cis guy? Oh, that was the last one too. He started dropping words when he started saying stuff like a cis man is just as valid as a trans woman. He said that multiple times too. I think you're missing a few words in there. Wouldn't you mean to say a cis man who claims they're a woman as valid as a woman, as a trans woman, but he, he dropped half the words. Yeah, he said cis trans woman as well. So at the end, he was like, well, what if, a, what if a man was a man? You know? what, Dude, dude, what if a man was a man? Crazy shit. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for the people who wanted me to go, like, super hard against him. But with that particular style of bad faith engagement, um, you usually want to, like, wait for them to fall apart. And then you go like, ah, you're a waste of time. Bah. You know, because if you just start yelling, they get what they want. It's not because they're not emotionally invested. So being angry at them doesn't provoke from them frustration. It provokes from them uh, catharsis. Little bits of uh, rhetoric advice. All right. So, yeah, that was good. 
Seems he was convinced identity equals performance. Well, he doesn't know that the the person to whom I just spoke is almost certainly a fascist who liked the PowerPoint lady because the PowerPoint lady is also almost certainly a fascist or at least a transphobe who fronts with bad arguments. And he wanted to take a shot at doing the same, but he doesn't know that much about trans issues, which is why we keep getting the awkward phrasing. And, you know, it, it yeah, it betrays a, it betrays a lack of understanding. But that doesn't mean he was stupid. He was smart enough to make a big mistake, which was to follow through in the arguments long enough in order to indicate that the later stuff he said was bullshit. Like him saying there's no way to objectively prove a definition of woman right or wrong, but then later saying it was like one plus one equals four, or speaking with the coherence of a person older than four years old and then later making the, an attack helicopter joke. Uh, they're inconsistencies that betray a person's not actually engaging in good faith. Sorry, I just thought I'd turn this into like a basic rhetoric and honesty lesson since we didn't get like a big blow up at the end, you know, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, is there a reason you didn't address that his argument was predicated on being able to remind us? Cause I assume from his perspective, he would say like, so they say they're a woman, but they're he, him, and they don't want to transition. They say they don't want to, and they say they don't care. It's like, you know, I talked about the inner world thing, but again, it's, you know, only uh, so much you can get there. Yeah, it is so difficult to get good debates with the, the right because they're all giggling lunatics who think that they can tear you apart by asking the same kinds of questions that you see people facetiously ask in the replies to, like, um, cat turd or whatever, you know? Like, well, if I could take this one to a lefty, they'd be they'd be shaking in their boots. It's Yeah, they, he, they, they're not prepared for a jokester like me tearing their ideology apart with one simple question phrased out over an hour. All right. Good hustle, team. Where's my the handle? Oh, there. I had the water bottle turn the other way around. Is there ever a good way to use bad faith to fortify your positions? Uh, yes, I did it with um, the conversation with that TikTok tanky guy whose, names, whose name I, d I don't remember. Uh, in that case, I was being bad faith in the sense that I was pretending to not know about the... Um, Eddie Liger, yeah. Uh, by pretending to not know about the details of the Ukraine war. Uh, and, and Russia's uh, uh, involvement from 2014 onwards. Though in that case, it wasn't because I was trying to lie about the information in the debate. It was because I was trying to prompt him to leave out bits of the story so I could make fun of him for it, which I think worked great. Uh, asking him, like, can you tell me more about this phone call? And then he sends me an article that has nothing to do with what he was talking about. And he's, the article is like, the, the, the chancellor spoke on X, Y, and Z. And he's like, well, it implies that she spoke on A, B, and C, you know, and he's just got really mad at the end. And that was the end of civilized conversation, uh, or even, even the, 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 anything approximating it. Yeah. Pretending in the most obvious way. I was trying to act deliberately and sincere there. Like it was obvious. I knew more than I was going on for, but you know, whatever. Oh, yeah. Dude, we're, I'm going to get so many followers from this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get so many followers from this epic own where I, after 15 minutes of questioning, link an article to you that it says nothing you said it said. Fantastic stuff. Luna and non compete were also intentionally bad faith. Non compete was a different kind of bad faith. That's a more normal kind of bad faith. Non compete's bad faith was that he was uncharitable and dishonest, but like in a normal way. He wasn't doing like the, the giggling fascist disingenuity thing that's so common these days. Yeah, yeah his, his primary ideology was wanting to call me a Nazi pedophile, so. At least in the sense that, uh, it, with regards to that ideological preference, he, uh, you know, he, he had fun there. 